So we have one question here. Um, there is a, a lever given to you. Um, it is uh, this or is placed on the pivot, on, the, on fixed point. Um, what force is being applied on the left side, which is 2 newtons, and the second force here on the right side is 3 newtons. The distance between the pivot and the first force is uh, 5 meters, and um, this one is not given, you do not know. You have to calculate the distance if there is no torque. If there is no torque, it means the beam is balanced. So, it is balanced. And when it is balanced, the sum of the torque here will be zero. The clockwise and the anti-clockwise uh, moments are equal. So, how you can calculate is uh, like this, that, okay, you have to first mark what to be with whatever is given here at this place, don't break it, it helps you to find the answer more easily and more structured uh, to um, answer the question. Um, so, the F1 is given, which is 2 newtons, and the next thing is the distance between the full swan and the pivot, which is 5 meters. Another thing which is given to you is the F2, which is 3 newtons. But what it is actually asking you to find is the D2. This is what you have to find. This is what you have to find. So, I know that the, some of the torques uh, should be zero. So, this force is causing a clockwise rotation, and this one is causing the anti clockwise rotation. So, these two should be equal, the, um, the amount of moments, so these two should be equal F1 times D1 equals to. F2 times D2. If you want to calculate this one, you keep this here and send this one here. Over F2. And now just place here down inside the formula F1 is 2 times 5 over F2. F2 is 3 and D2 I can calculate from here. You can just do the math, it becomes 10 over 3. It should be something around this 3.3 and uh, okay, it is 3.3. And it is measured in meters, all the distances, so the distance also here should be meters. So the distance between this actual um, uh, point of the action of the force to the pivot should be around uh, 3.3 meters. So let's have a look at into another example. Um, this example we have many forces that were actually applying on this uh, labor arm. And one force is written here, the force one, which is equal to 2 newtons and is from um, which is downward and pushing the lever down. The other one is to uh, force two is one newton. The distance between the distance of the force one to force two is two centimeter. But of course the, the distance from the force one to the pivot should be how much? Two plus two becomes four centimeter. So the distance of the F1, the force one, should be four centimeter. Don't be confused. So the distance, if you want to put for the uh, F1, should not be two centimeter, it should be four centimeter. The next one we have is the force three, G is upward and it's two newtons, so to push the lever up uh, in one centimeter. The distance between this word, the uh, the action force and um, also the pivot. Then we have force 4, we do not know how much newton it is, but we have a distance of it from the pivot, which is 6 cm. I want all the data here which is given to me. What do we know uh, is that the F1 is equal to 2 newtons, and we know that the uh, distance 1 should be 2 plus 2, which is 4 cm. It's not too okay. So the next one that we have 
is the F2. F2 also is given. F2 is one Newton. The um, its distance distance equals to uh, two centimeter. The next one that we have is F3. F3 uh, is equals to two Newtons. And the distance of E, which is D3, equals to one centimeter. And the next one, which is F4, F4 should be counted as the first I write its uh, distance. Distance number four is equal to six centimeter. And the force we have to calculate, we don't know. This is what we don't know, we have to gain. Um, okay, uh, let's see. What else is needed to do? We said that the, because the beam is balanced, so what we have to do is should know that the counterclockwise and the clockwise moment should be equal. So I find the clockwise and anticlockwise uh, moments first. This one is housing clockwise moment. And this one anticlockwise. And this one anticlockwise. And this one also anticlockwise. So force one, two, and three, they are in a, they're doing the same rotation and they're in the same directions. So force one, two, and three, all of them are anti clockwise. Anti clockwise. Only this one is clockwise. So what actually I have to do is that to balance them, the clockwise rotation and uh, anti clockwise rotation. Some of the anti clockwise rotation should be equal to the, uh, some of the clockwise rotation. So let, let me see what we can do. It means that F1 times D1, this one, plus F2 times D2, plus F3 times D3 should be equal to F4. F4 times D4. Now, this one is what I have to calculate. It means that, so what I actually have to do is here, first I will substitute the, um, the data here inside the formula. So F1 is 2 times 4 plus 1 times 2 plus uh, 2 times 1 equals to uh, 6 times d4. So this one becomes 2 times 4 becomes 8. And this one answer is 2, this one is 2, so it becomes 8 plus 2 plus 2 should be equal to 6 times d4. Then this one, the answer becomes 12 equals to 6 times d4. So d4 equals to, oh sorry, I said I written d4, oh, excuse me. Uh, this is the force. The force here should be calculated. So this is an F4, not the D4, and also the same for here. Um, we have F4 here, we have F4 here, because we have to calculate the force, not the distance. So this one also should be F4. So it becomes 12 over 6 equals to 2. So the force here is equal to 2. Newton. Answer is 2. So in order to the, all the moments should be, the moments of the forces be the same, uh, we have to apply a 2 Newton force here. And finally, the last example. Um, okay, we have a beam here and it's placed on the pivot. And as you can see, there is no torque in the beam is balanced. If it is balanced, the total um, moments should be the same at each of the counter and clockwise, uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise moments should be equal. 
uh, we have two loads here. Uh, one is placed at the, uh, the length of the east arm and the left side is 60 cm, uh, which means that each one mark is showing 10 cm. Uh, so if I want to find the distance of these 40 grams of mass here, it means that I have to count the number of the marks here times 10. 1, 2, 3 times 10 becomes 30. So here is 30 uh, centimeters away from the pivot. And here we have 1, 2, 3 again. So what we need the total? The total becomes 3 and 3 60. So the distance for this one is 60 centimeters away. The distance is 65 grams, or 60, 60 centimeters away from the pivot. Uh, if I want to convert it into meters, it becomes 0 0.6 meters, and this one becomes 0 0.3 meters. And here we want to place a load which is 105 grams. Why? Well, no, where should I place it? Very away from the pivot at this side. And uh, to make it balance, I mean, the total force should be equal to zero. Um, so, what I know is that the total, the sum of the total torque should be zero. Why I have put here minus? Because we said that the positive signs are showing the anticlockwise rotation. So the torque in the counterclockwise counter for this one, the torque of this force which causes an anticlockwise rotation, plus the torque of the third load, which is here, causing a clockwise rotation. So I should put minus here. So that comes on the plus minus torque 3 equals to 0. I know that the torque equals to force times distance. The torque equals to force times distance. Or I, because I didn't mention the sine theta because the theta here is 90 degree and the sine theta is equal to 1. So it has no effect in our calculation. So I can straight use this formula here. Torque equals to force times distance. Why I have mentioned m times g? Because I know that here we don't have force, I have mass. I have to convert uh, mass into force. How do I do that? Mass equals to, sorry, force equals to mass times gravity. Or uh, you can mass times uh, 9.81, or you can, for easier calculations, oh, I mean, if, I, if you have a calculator, you easily can use that one. If you don't have, you can use 10 and that's that. Uh, so it becomes the mass times 10, uh, so 650 newtons, for example. So the next thing, so I want to just put all here and then do the calculations, MGD. So for the first force, I have M1 GD1 plus this one minus this one. It should be all equal to zero. So I can calculate the D3 here. I remove the Gs because if I put G, the Gs are all the same, so you can ignore it. You can just balance them out. Uh, I can remove them from uh, this uh, actual equation. So in a step, I write M1 times D plus M2 times D. To um, this one divided by m3 equals to, we just saw the substitute, 65 is the mass of the first uh, load times 0 0.55. Um, okay, oh, sorry, um, this is 60. If you look the calculation and just substitute the, um, the data here, so it becomes 65 times 0 0.6 meters, as I have written here. So plus the force here, 40 times 0 0.3 meters, or 30 meters. The answer of this one you work out becomes 39 plus 12 equals to 468. 468 divided by 100. 5 grams equals to 0 0.49 meters. It means that you have to place this load, which is 105 grams, 0 0.49 meters away from the from the pivot here. You can cover it. You can just um, do the math, do the workout by using the centimeter. That's that what you gain at the end. The answer is centimeter. But you can also convert it to meters. Meters is more preferred.